fire in standard Ukrainian becomes Ohen in Lemko. In fact, the very name of the people appears to be tied to the dialect. Lemkos use the word lem, meaning only in place of tilki or lish in standard Ukrainian. The theory goes that north of Carpathians, Ukrainians to the east would have been aware of the difference and began calling people Lemkos. The word lem in much of eastern Lemkin region was replaced by the word tilko, regional variation of tilke in modern times and underscores regional differences within the dialect. The dialect is further related, uh, is, is fur has further retained Old Slavic words no longer used in modern languages. The Kievan Chronicle, for example, refers to serfs as Chelyad. In the Lemkian dialect, it signifies members of a household. Not much is known about the early history of the region. It apparently was settled by white Croats, as was the rest of Galicia. In the, in the South Mongols burning monastery housing all documents, therefore very little is known about the area. To the north, the area was part of the Galician Principality, and in, a, and in, a in the 13th century, Galician Bolinian Chronicle provides some information. The area extended about 20 miles west of Shan River, with Shanik as the principal town. It was the first Galician town to accept Magdeburg law, a German law that provided for self-governance. After the Polish conquest of Western Ukraine in the 14th century, Western Ukrainian districts over time were Polonized, and the Polish-Ukrainian ethnic line moved east up to 40 miles in some areas by World War II. There was some Polonization in the Lemkin region around the towns of Korosno and Sianik, but in the mountains, Lemkos retained their identity and migrated westward for about 35 miles into the territory under the nominal control of the Polish crown. Thus, the ethnographic map of Ukraine during the interwar period shows Lemkin region jutting out deep into Poland. With the spread of nationalism, national identity became a, an important issue among Lemkos, just as it was among other Ukrainians. Lemkos <coughs> were called Rusins on both sides of the Carpathians, but in, on the village level, Rusnak was frequently used, and of course Lemko north of Carpathians. In Galicia during the second half of the 19th century, there was a debate about national identity, and Ukrainophiles eventually prevailed over those claiming to be Rusins or Muscophiles. The debate about national identity also took place in the region, and by World War II, there was a division between East and West. The pro-Ukrainian orientation prevailed in Eastern counties that had been part of the Kyiv and Rus. In Western counties, Rusin or Muscophile or orientation was strong in the counties settled after the Polish conquest. As the war ends, Ukrainians in, in Galicia proclaimed independence on November 1, 1918. A few days later, Father Spilko of Upper Vislik, Shani County, organized a meeting to discuss their future. About 70 delegates from over 30 villages attended the meeting and declared that the county should attach itself to the newly formed Western Ukrainian Republic. To that end, a militia unit totaling about 300 men is formed and commanded by Andriy Kura, former sergeant in the Austrian army. The unit skirmished with local Poles <coughs> until the Polish ar army arrived and captured Vislik on January 23, 1919, and, in the, and the village of Comancha the following day. This entity is sometimes referred to as the Lemko Republic or Comancha Republic since the, since the last battle with Poles took place in that village. Similar events were unfolding in the West. As Western Lemko, as West, Western Lemko Republic was proclaimed in the village of Florinka, December 5, 1918. Unla unlike Lemkos in the East who hoped to join the Ukrainian Republic, those in the West had to find a suitable partner. Leaders made contact with Pyashiv National Council on the south side of Carpathians and held a joint meeting on December 21, 1918 in Kosice, Slovakia. 
They decided to, attack the, to attach the Lemkin region on both sides of Carpathians to the Czechoslovak Republic. Czechs attached only the southern portion and Poles occupied the north. <clears throat> During the interwar period, Lemk was in the Pyashiv area were subject to assimilation by Slovaks, but fared much better than those in the north under Poland. The Second Polish Republic promoted assimilis, assimilationist policies against Ukrainians and other minorities and exploited differences, differences among Lemkos. Lemko pri primer was provided for schools in western counties and some educational material was introduced in the dialect using Latin alphabet. The collapse of the Polish state brought profound changes for Ukrainians. Most of Western Ukraine was added to the Soviet Union. The German-Soviet boundary was anchored on the Buhenshan River, somewhat west of the current Polish-Ukrainian boundary. The two countries signed a population exchange agreement, operative from November 16, 1939 to March 1, 1940. That became a model for the 1944 Soviet-Polish population exchange agreement. The agreement allowed folk storage people of German ancestry to migrate to the German zone and, Ukraine, and Ukrainians could move to the Soviet zone. Approximately 10,000 people entered the German zone. Some were folk storage, but many were Ukrainians claiming to be Germans. These people and other Ukrainian activists from the East played an important role during the German occupation in raising national awareness in the districts on the edge of Europe ethnographic Ukraine. Approximately 9,000 Ukrainians migrated to the Soviet zone. Most came from the home region, which had been part of the Russian Empire, and Muscophile Lemkos. During the German occupation, the Ukrainian Central Committee, headed by Volodymyr Kubiyovich, promoted education, economic activities, and relief work. In respect to education, Ukrainian became the language of instruction and the curric curriculum sought to inculcate patriotism among the young and launch a campaign against Muscophiles in the Lemkian region. By the end of the war, the area became much more na nationalistic than it had been at the beginning. As the war was ending, Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, OUN, and the Ukrainian insurgent army, UPA, began expanding in the, in the area and became a major factor in retarding deportations for several years. The, o, the ON organization in, this, in, this, this, in these districts were subor subordinated to the Lviv territorial executive, but the establishment of the new Polish border forced the leadership to establish Transkurzon country executive. The underground designated all Ukrainian districts in Poland as Transkurzon. The new executive reported directly to the Supreme OUN executive in Ukraine and had the authority to receive instructions directly from the West where OUN representatives were located and included much of the leadership. Located outside the Soviet Union, Transkurzon became an important link between Ukraine and the West Contacts between Ukraine and the external units in, in Munich were maintained by couriers coming from Ukraine and Poland, uh, from Ukraine to Poland, and with the help of local organizations sent through Czechoslovakia to Germany. ON in Transcarpathia was headed by Yaroslav Staruch and his deputy Vasily Halasa, and provided ideological guidance for the UPA and wide range of services. These included intelligence, supplies, medical services, and printed material for partisans and the civilian population. As the chart shows, the organization was divided into three main regions with numerous subordinate units. Region 1 comprised Peremishal area and Gisko and Shani counties. Region 2 encompassed portion of Peremishal county and Yaroslav and Hrubashu, and Hrubashu county. Region 3 covered home, re uh, home area and the adjacent territory in the Lublin province. 
As with, as with the ON, partisan units in Western districts were subordinated to the superior organizations in the East. After the establish, establishment of a new border, Military District 6, Shan, was formed, commanded by Miroslav Nishkevich, and divided into three tactical sectors, as indicated in the chart. Tactical Sector 26 was the largest, consisting of two battalions, commanded by Vasil Mizerny, Ren, former police lieutenant in Sianik. The battalion operated primarily in Lisko and Sianik counties. Paramesha Batal Battalion was commanded initially by Mikhail Ohalo, Konig, officer of the Galician Division. After his death in 1946, the battalion was taken over by Petro Mikolenko, Baida, a former Red Army lieutenant from the Poltava region in eastern Ukraine. Tactical Sector 27 was commanded by Ivan Spontak from Transcarpathia, who also served as a deputy commander of the district. He fought against the Hungarian conquest of, Car of Carpathia, Ukraine. The battalion operated in Yaroslav and Hrubeshev counties. Tw Tactical Sector 28 operated in home area and had several commanders. Volodymyr Sorochak, Berkut, was the last commander. The UPA was organized as a regular army. A squad consisted of about 10 men, and several squads formed a platoon. Three or four platoons comprised a sotnya, totaling about 100 to 120 men. Several sotnyas formed a battalion. Partisans were armed primarily with Soviet or German rifles, but many had automatic, automatic weapons, usually Soviet submachine guns, using pistol-sized ammunition. Sotnya typically had 10 to 15 machine guns, primarily light Soviet machine guns with a 50-round drum. UPA in, tra in Transcorzon, therefore, was a very well-armed organization. Based on fragmentary data, about 10% of the UPA in the area consisted of former policemen and men who served in German units. These men comprised much of the UPA leadership. Lemkos did not hold important posts, but there was at least one platoon leader and probably few squad leaders. It's not clear how many Lemkos served. Two to 300 is probably a fair estimate. Hrin Sotnya was occasionally called Lemko Sotnya, where Lemkos comprised a large portion of the unit. In Western Lemkin, in Western Lemkin counties, however, Mikhailo Fedak, Smirny, a Lemko formed a large ON unit and a network of village self-defense units. Partisan units in Transcorzon were organized largely in 1944-45, and at its maximum strength reached about 2,500 men. UPA's principal function was to prevent the deportation of Ukrainians. To that end, partisans attacked railroad stations, blew up bridges, tore up railroad tracks, cut telephone lines, attacked population exchange commissions, and Polish troops and police. Attacks on the troops normally consisted of ambushes and night raids. In 1944, when parts of eastern Poland was occupied by the Red Army, the Polish Liberation Committee and the Soviet Union immediately signed border and population exchange agreements. The border agreement was signed on July 27, 1944, based on the Curzon Line, proposed first by British Foreign Minister Lord Curzon on July 11, 1920, as the demarcation line between Poland and Soviet Russia. The population exchange, exchange agreement was signed on September 9, 1944, and was billed as voluntary population transfer. Ukrainians in Poland could emigrate to Ukraine, and on the Soviet side, removal was to be instituted on the territories that were part of the, of the Polish state on September 17, 1939, the date of the Soviet attack on Poland. During 1944, Ukrainians left either voluntarily or were escaping attacks by the Polish underground and civilian gangs, especially in the Holm region. The following year, force, forceful expulsions were introduced through various administrative measures, raising taxes, for example, and as a last resort, 
police and army were used. These measures had limited success. By September 1945, only about 200,000 Ukrainians were removed out of about 700,000. To expedite the deportation, three Polish divisions were moved to the Ukrainian districts. The divisions proved inadequate with fierce UPA attacks and adamant refusal of people to leave, who fled to the forest, hid in ravines, or deported villages, and in the Lemkin region, occasionally fled to Slovakia. To meet the new deadline of June 1945, uh, 46, I should say, Operation Zhashov was organized on April 5, 1946. Additional troops were sent to Ukrainian districts, about 1,200 uh, about 12,000 men, augmented by about 2,000 men of the border guards, internal troops, and police. The new campaign unfolded with troops raiding Ukrainian villages, burning, looting, and killing civilians increased. People now were taken to the deportation points and forced to sign necessary documents there. By the end of Operation Zhashov, 484,000 Ukrainians were deported. At the end of Operation Zhashov, authorities concluded that, that most Ukrainians had, had been deported. Perhaps 14 to 20,000 still remain in Poland, while partisans were largely destroyed. A gross misreading of the situation. The army continued small operations against the underground that virtually ceased in the autumn, and the UPA, after heavy fighting during the first half of the year, curtailed offensive operations. Both Polish assumptions were incorrect. Partisans sustained losses, but the units remained intact, if slightly smaller, and almost 200,000 people managed to evade deportations. Still able to provide the underground with some recruits, intelligence, and food, although at reduced levels. Many high-ranking Polish officers, however, was le were less optimistic that the under underground had been decimated and demanded total expulsion of Ukrainians. As the deportation to the Soviet Union ended, the only option was, to, was the removal to the newly acquired German territories in the West and scattering people thinly among Poles with the view of quick assimilation. At the beginning of 1947, plans were made for another deportation. More troops moved to the Ukrainian districts, especially to the southern portion of Zhashov province. The Paramishalchianik area was a partisan country. Two of the four battalions operated here and offered stiff resistance to the army. Fighting increased in the first months of the year, but the situation changed drastically after March, 19, after March 29th. On that date, Colonel General Karol Sviarchevsky, second vice minister of defense, was ambushed and killed while inspecting troops in the area. The event moved the government to activate planned Operation Vistula and deport remaining Ukrainians to the west. During this operation, more troops were sent, about 18,000 to the Ukrainian districts, but more importantly, tactics were changed. During the previous operations, emphasis was placed on deporting, Ukra uh, were placed on deporting Ukrainians along several, several hundred mile border with Ukraine. Thinly spread troops enabled partisans to attack transportation network and troops conducting deportations. Now, most of the troops were deployed in several counties at a time. Normally, about 1,000 men were assigned to track a single Lupa Sotnia, a unit now averaging about 100 men or less. The remaining troops were used to deport civilians. Deportations began on, on April 29th along the southern portion of the Polish-Ukrainian border. UPA, now on a run, could not offer resistance, and, and civilians had no place to flee. The area was flooded with troops. After the designated area was cleared, troops would move, uh, move to the next several counties, working their way along the Polish-Ukrainian border north. By the end of July, operation was concluded, and 140,000 Ukrainians were sent to the west and north of Poland. Actually, a small number of people were removed after this date. The UPA in Poland was eliminated during the operation. 
partisans sustained heavy losses, and several Sotnias received orders to head to the American zone in Germany through Czechoslovakia. Most were killed or captured. Other Sotnias crossed the border to fight in Ukraine. Currently, Lemkos live in three, Lemkos and their descendants live in three countries, Ukraine, Poland, and Slovakia. Those in Ukraine, as uh, Karina will indicate, identify themselves as Ukrainians. I have not been able to, loca to locate figures for those in Poland. People from eastern counties would, would have considered themselves as both Lemkos and Ukrainians. Whether any shift occurred among, in, in identity among those from the west is uncertain. In Czechoslovakia, data show that 55,000 Lemkos lived in the country in, in 1987. 48,000 considered themselves Ukrainians, and 7,000 claimed Russian identity. Thank you.